Hello and welcome to week two of IPL Weekly Season 8. Today I'm joined by the coach of the of Evans Gambit. By the way, I'm Big Ty Browning, coach of the Green Bay Yampers, but I'm joined by coach of Evans Gambit, TRT. How you doing, TRT? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on, bro. Yeah, dude. Thanks for coming on. Uh, thanks for making your IPL Weekly debut. We had a really exciting week one. We had a slate of five matches uh, at, with Steven, coach of Bayern Munich. By, not Bayern Munich, Bayern Munchlax on his uh, bye week. Um, so we're just going to go through each game this week and then maybe look ahead to the matches next week. So let's start off with the first match of the week, which was the Green Bay Yampers versus the... Uh, Columbus Calyrex, the Green Bay Yampers came out on top 4 nothing, uh, with Primate picking up 3 kills, Tinglu, uh, Gengar, and Gudra also picking up a kill each. Um, so, uh, a 4 nothing victory for, uh, the Yampers, um, which is obviously my team, uh, but I'll, 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 what did you think of the match? How, uh, what did you think of the sets that were brought? I felt good going in about, um, that I was going to be able to outlast uh, Pranov, and also uh, I just really wanted a Primate sweep this season, and I achieved that, so <laughs> I'm, I'm happy with it. Yeah, I, I mean, to be fair, I really thought, the yeah, Primate sweep, that's going to be rough. I think Pranov handled himself well for not being that experienced in the draft format. Obviously, sure. dealing with with Hazard stack and like a fat team, losing Iron Hands early was not easy for him at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I do feel like, you know, probably the worst possible team to face week <laughs> one. Like, I face a week two and I'm already, like, scratching my head against half the mans and then you're stuck there and you're, like, trying to figure out how to break. I do feel like Pranav could maybe use a little more offensive synergy going forward, maybe a few transactions to change it up. Because it did feel like, while he does have, like, good breaking power on this team, there's just certain times it feels like too many things hit the same things sure no i i definitely i definitely could see that no that was that's true he did got he did get rolled into uh iron hands with the dragon tail which was rough um i i do think he only has two means of removal on his team right now he has the altaria for defog and he has he has a rapid spinner it's the the pokemon is escaping me right now let me let me pull up his team real quick. But he has only two means of removal, so I think if... Oh, Kragnall. Which are two months, you know, you don't really want to break every single week. So, um, you know, removal is really hard to come by this generation. But as you saw in this first match, it could be so useful. And I'm not the only team that can hazard stack in this league. So uh, I think it definitely... Uh, you know, it's something that part of should consider. He does have a bye week this week, so he has some time to ponder, watch all the matches unfold in front of him, and then make, maybe make some transactions next week. But uh, I agree. I think he did. this is his first real uh, draft league battle. I mean, he, he's done some, like, mini tournaments and stuff, but those were kind of gimmicky. Um, where, you know, he, where he was facing, like, a Lugia, and one was an ability draft. So um, I, I do think he, he did handle himself pretty well. Um, and for, for new players, you're right. Hazards and like substitute, I feel like are the two hardest things to deal with because those are not some things you, those are those aren't things you see while you're playing Pokemon um, usually uh, through through the game. So um, he did well. I, I I do think, especially to get two Pokemon. I I think hitting myself in confusion twice in a row was a little unfortunate. It could have been um, a bigger win. And I think at the end I, I could have played around the Rocky Helmet, um, but I just really wanted the kills on Prime Ape, So. Hopefully that doesn't. Hopefully that doesn't come to bite me in the butt, come playoff seeding time. But um, yeah, overall I, I think a good start for Prano. Um, he'll he'll figure it out as he go, as he goes. And honestly, like his team. I mean, he has a really threatening core of a team if he can just uh, smooth out the edges. Any other Absolutely. thoughts on this match or on these teams? Um, I think uh, overall, even losing 0-4 was not actually the worst result because as we're going to see with some of the other games, there were teams that lost a lot more differential going forward. Yes. Um, I think with Pranav, I think the bye week's going to do him good. Yeah. Um, be a little time to get off and recover from this game <laughs> and uh, come back with a fresh mind with whoever he plays week three. Yes. Um, 
but overall, I think it's a pretty clean win. I'm just glad Primeape died so that it can get further away from the kill leader total. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> why? Okay, I guess we'll see why. Uh, you, your Pokemon, I believe, leads the kill, has the kill lead. Um, but let's move on to the next match. Uh, speaking of um, larger results, uh, <laughs> this uh, was uh, Critic versus Samir. So, uh, Ram, Ramstein, 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 Raichu's. <laughs> What what's the correct pronunciation? TRT. I'm pretty sure it's Ramstein because it's the Ramstein. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, Ramstein Raichu's versus the Dublin uh, Dragons. Uh, Critic ends up picking up a 5-0 victory. Um, pretty commanding. Um, pretty commanding victory. I, I will say I think Severe played pretty poorly. And again, he's my cousin, so I can say that. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I was talking to him after the game, and he, he kind of knows that um, there was just a few misplays. Like, setting up after the trick, I think he could have gotten some really good momentum there by just Volt Switching turn one. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think he tried to T-Wave a, a sub later, um, Dragon Dancing in front of an unaware will o um, that we, we see right there. So, um, you know, I, there was a pathway to victory for Samir. Uh, and it was Lumberry Tyranitar. Um, or just keeping Tyranitar healthy, you know, in the back. I think he definitely could have won this this battle, so it was unfortunate. Um, also, you know, we got a we got a Terra Calc uh, situation here where he ice punched again for getting to change the Terra type in the Calc. Or he crunched rather. Um, uh, uh, yeah. so I mean that happened, but um, good win for TRT. Uh, or for not for TRT. For Critic, <laughs> <laughs> and a good way to start the season. Bro. <laughs> yeah, definitely a good way to start the season. I think Critic uh, had a little bit of issues while building this team because he was like trying to find a six that worked best for him, which I think going forward might actually be an issue for this team because so much of his team is dependent on the rest of it. Um, that does seem like it'll end up being an issue at times. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Skeletor is just busted. I'm gonna be honest. It's gonna be, end up being one of the better mons in the league because it's just such a pain to deal with. Like, I told him when we, I helped him build for this team. So I was, I told him to switch out on Titar because I was like, okay, this, this is the sort of thing that could possibly just, you know, be really annoying. But like, even if it D dances, it's not the end of the world because he has answers to D dance. But unless it D dances more than once. If he missed that Willow Wisp, I was gonna chew him out. Even though I don't know, because it was D Dance and uh, Policy, I wanna say. Yes. I don't think it killed with Stone Edge Raw because it was a very, very fat Skeletorge. And, and I um, believe he had a Rock Slide, so he he needed uh, he needed to he, he basically he needed to crunch twice. Yeah, uh, he needed to crunch twice. Uh, yeah. Um, other than that, I honestly think it was kind of a bad matchup for some reason. It was like. It was like it was kind of the issues we that you guys talked about during the draft analysis with this team. It's kind of heavily relying on Dragapult to do a lot of lifting. Yeah, no, I agreed. It, it was a bad matchup. This is not the greatest Dragapult matchup that we saw. It's also really not a great Titar matchup, honestly. Um, so I, it was a bad matchup. Not really well played. You know, the fact that Heracross gets Trailblaze is kind of wild, actually. Um, cause you, you can get the Guts plus one or the Moxie plus one pretty easily, but, um, the stats for this match, uh, Skeledurge, uh, picked up three kills, Heracross got two, Serena had one, and then Toxapex had a passive kill, um, so from, from Samir's end, so, um, pretty decisive victory for Critic. uh, both these guys' first matches in the IPL proper, so, always, always fun to see that, um, I, I am interested, like you said, to see what Critic does going forward. Um, we'll, we'll talk about his matchup coming up uh, later, but uh, I, I do think I do think you're right about his about his team. But I mean, if he does bring like the six months that work together against a particular team, it's gonna be it's so difficult to deal with. Um, so his team is really annoying. Like e even just I'm I'm so not looking forward to prepping for his team, honestly. Um, but, I mean, I feel like there's just a lot of good teams in this league, so, uh, it, it kind of is like that all around. Uh, 
Absolutely. I'm, I'm honestly hoping that we both make the playoffs before we face. We face like week 10 or week 11, so I'm just like, okay, maybe we can meme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it could be. I, I mean, <laughs> it, it's possible that you're in good position since six out of the 11 make the playoffs, so. Uh, yeah. That's definitely, that's definitely possible. All right, moving on, we had the Milwaukee Mewers versus the Hartford Whalemers. This is Eric's first competitive battle ever, I'm pretty sure. Um, or it's one of his first. Uh, Saho had a pretty decisive victory, uh, winning 6-0. Slowbro got two, Florgus got one, Scizor got two, and Passimian got one. And you'll see Florgus uh, was able to set up, uh, or not Florgus, Slowbro was able to set up almost right away and um, put a ton of pressure on uh, the Hartford Whalemers. Um, but yeah, Saho was pretty much in control this entire time. He couldn't really break uh, Slowbro. Um, or, I mean, maybe he could have, but he didn't switch out. Uh, he, 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 has, he had Weavile, he had Serral Edge, but um, Slowbro was, was, was tough to deal with, I think, for, for Eric here. Yeah, absolutely. I think Sahil misplayed initially, like turn 3, uh, I think you talked about it on your stream, you were streaming when he played and uh, you said, I can't believe he risked the crit on EQ, um, but yes. at the same time, I don't know if it really mattered too much, again, it's just nitpicking because this was kind of like, let's be honest, this is someone playing their first competitive game versus someone who's a clear bet in this position. Mm -hmm. um, overall, I, I love the SD play from Eric, that was such a big dick play. It was, yeah. I was like, yo, Eric, let's go. And then it did 70. And I was like, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> no, at that point, he had to make a play, right? Yeah, he really did. Yeah. So, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, overall, I think, uh, even here, I think forcing the U-turn, I guess, <laughs> uh, one way of getting rid of Scizor, even though I'm pretty sure it was just on Bug Bite. No, it lost but... Bug Bite. Oh, it lost Bug Bite. Oh, my God. Yeah. It has X Scizor. But... Oh, it has X but it's not as strong. No, no. No, yeah, I was talking about that. I was like, did he did he go to Wilchin to, like, force him to use U-turn? But um, it looks like it was Belly Drum, uh, so Titan there with the Citrus Berry. Uh, he wasn't able to set that up, obviously. Um, but, you know, I, I, it, it, again, another player new to Draft League. The building will come. I mean, the, the in-battle instincts will come for sure, too. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, even just looking at his team, Slowbro, Slowbro kind of, even the Pokemon that have that hit it for super effective damage, Slowbro kind of just did work, um, no matter what. And with in the combination with Scizor, um, yeah, I, 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 not a great matchup for Eric at all. Absolutely, I think overall, it's Sahil has, has like one of the best teams in the league. It's, yep. I feel, I feel for Eric, Samir, and for uh, Pranav. Sorry. Enough. Yes, I, I feel for all three of them because it's like three horrible matches to start off with, but it's a smaller league and there's not much you can do in terms of like you will eventually like face lesser experienced players and mm -hmm. then you'll actually have a pretty, pretty solid, pretty good chance of winning right. in just alone. But initially when you're playing the vets, it's it's a bit harder to just beat guys who've been around for a very long time, but it's like, it's a process. Just like Sahil says on the and clear out. <laughs> and um, who do we have next? Yeah. Um. Let's go to the next match. Well, I think it's you. Yeah. It's. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's... I think this game had to happen because until this point we hadn't had six Pokemon die for one day. <laughs> <laughs> so. We needed this to really go down. I feel so stupid for terroring turn one because I was like, oh god, if I actually was just rock type, I should have realized that jump luff does no damage. I should have just stayed a rock type and then salt cure would have done all the damage I needed. Um, this map of stuff is demonic, man. I did not imagine, like when I calculated first, I was like, Jesus Christ, max HP, max defense. I was like, holy mother of God, this thing is, is, is terrifying. M Mabastuf is a um, Mabastuf is a really underrated Pokemon, um, and this of course this is your team. This is Evans Gambit versus Matt and the Toledo Team Rockets. Um, 
you were able to pick up a 1-0 victory um, with the Dragonite sweep, which will come up at the end here. Dragonite got five kills, Meow Squad got one, um, and then uh, Sandy Shocks got two, Haxorus got two, and Mabostiff got one. So definitely match of the week. Match of the week we thought coming in to this week, and it definitely lived up to the hype. But no, I, I the turn one, um, the turn one Ghost Terra was interesting. It did it. I mean, later you were able to sp uh, switch in on a, a potential spin, right? Am I, am I mistaken? Or, I mean, you would have been if you got up rocks. I would have spin blocked anyway because I would have died to rocks. Oh, that's what that is. That's right. That's right. Well, I mean, that was... You could have done that <laughs> um, if if it was healthy. But this was a tough matchup for you, honestly. Um, so the, the big thing here, as you can see, is Matt forgot to bring the sun. The cool, sun. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how much that ended up mattering, but it would have boosted um, the protosynthesis on what's its face? Shock. Yeah, shocks. And obviously that lava plume would have done more there, and um, jump puff would have gotten chlorophyll. So, an unfortunate, unfortunate error. This also, this play rough miss by your uh, Meowskarada was huge. And I thought at this point, I thought it was oh, over. Yeah. I honestly, yeah, I thought. No, I, would, <laughs> I, would, I was just setting up for the. Treads win the whole game. Like I was like, okay, he doesn't know I'm Scarf. Like Treads wins with the six he's brought. If I just chip and kill Jumpluff, so I was just setting up the Treads win there, and I was like, okay, if Haxorus gets his pets played off, I come in, I EQ, he goes Jumpluff, I let Don Donzo get sleep, mm -hmm. uh, get put to sleep, and then go into D Knight, take two, and then go into Treads and win. And I was like, that was just the whole, uh, the whole thought process. Then when it missed, I was like, shit. But then, um, Dondozo came through, man. Oh my god, Dondozo. Oh my god, look at these Pokemon doing 30% to each other. <laughs> so stupid. Here I had the Heavy Slam because, uh, you I want... didn't want to kill Mabustiff, and yes. Heavy Slam still put Jumpluff in range after rocks of, like, minus one E speed, so Jumpluff wouldn't be able to sleep me. So I was like, okay, I'll be able to get off the e speeds worst case, the three um, Dragon Dancers worst case, even with the Intimidate Cycle, so I don't think I can lose. Right. No, this is, um, that was a great play. Like, you, you definitely had to do that. Uh, and, and once you got your, your D-Dance off, I I think it was pretty much over. There was not a whole lot Matt could do. I mean, as you can see, he, I mean, you o code everything after that. Um, I, I was thinking, oh, maybe... Maybe just break the scale first, not instead of taunting. But even then, like he had nothing, he couldn't get a hit off against you afterwards. So, uh, did he Terra in this match? Oh, he did. He Terra and yeah, yeah. yeah. I think um, the biggest thing for me was not clicking recover on Knuckle Stack on that turn with uh, Goldango was bad play. Like critic pointed that out. I should have clicked recover there because if I if I recover there, if I stay in there and he clicks make it rain again, I get to set up and win. Mm. And if he if he doesn't click make it rain again and switches out like he did into Sandy Sharks, like that would have given me uh, a real free recover with Knackle Stack, and he really had a tough time with Knackle Stack outside of Goldengo. Yeah, he did. I, I thought that was that was a little rough, uh, basically losing it early, um, mm -hmm. but. Dude, I mean, Dragonite is such a threat. Even, I think, you know, uh, Dragonite is a tier... Is it a tier 2 Pokemon? Um, no. Okay, it was tier 1. one. It was tier 1. No. Okay, good. I fought for it to be in tier <laughs> yeah, 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Well, yeah, you fought for it to be in tier 1 and you, you took it yourself. But um, I think people think, oh, it can't tear in normal, so it's not as threatening. But it's still, it's just so good in this meta right now. Um, yeah. Like, Extreme Speed is just so, so good. And... Uh, I got a face it this week, which we'll talk about. But I really well played. I think on both. I think I think Matt was able to. Uh, I mean, you know, every every match is going to have misplays on both sides um, to an extent. Um, I thought Matt did pretty well, especially adjusting for the fact that he did not have the sun. Um, he probably would have. Uh, he maybe would have kept Torkoal a little healthier if he did, and then, you know. Um, I, but again, I don't know how much of a difference that would have made, honestly. Um, but yeah, no, yeah. He, he really, once everything got chipped a little bit, I mean, mm -hmm. Dragonite always won, so. Yeah. 
I'm just glad Dragonite came through because my whole plan for the entire first half of the game was just like, I was like, oh god, okay, Iron Treads has to win this. Iron Treads has to win this. Like, as soon as he clicked Make It Rain and I realized Goldengo was specs, I was like, oh god, it's all on Iron Treads now. And then <laughs> I was terrified, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you pulled through your first IPL weekly win. Uh, how do you feel about the win? I feel good. I'm gonna be honest, I really thought I was gonna lose this one. <laughs> I, I was like, I did too. I was like, yeah, Matt's a really good battler. Plus, yeah. like, the matchup was really bad. This is probably the worst matchup I have, period, in the league. And I was like, oh my god, I don't know. I had like, I sent you like wacky, wacky sets I was coming up with. <laughs> I brought a power gym, Neil Skaranda. Dude, it works, bro. Good. It works. <laughs> so yeah, it did. But it felt good for a game to be close after three games of nothingness that's true closeness that's true you know i mean this is like i said this is the match that that we circled going into the week because um we we did know like the other ones we we you know it was three inexperienced battlers versus three experienced battlers so um we thought it might go that way um but uh really fun one that brings us to the final match of the week another match between uh two um experienced battlers and uh a really fun one. So it was the Atlanta Altarias versus the uh, Manchester Umbreons. Um, Austin and the Umbreons did manage to pick up the victory. Uh, was it 2 nothing? 2 nothing. Yeah, yeah 2 nothing. Annihilate uh, got uh, 2 kills. Um, Talonflame got 1. Toxtricity got 1. Um, and then Hydreigon and Gastron got 1 as well. So... And then for for on Griffin's side, Swalla got a passive kill, Mudsdale got a kill, Iron Moth got a kill, and Quackable got a kill. And you can see this 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 Swalla was literally just an anti annihilate Swalla. He goes tear normal here into the encore, which is pretty fun play. Um, and we see later that he was Liquid Ooze. So even if if annihilate were to get that Drain Punch off, it would have died because it, it it literally does. Um, Liquid Ooze takes the health you would have gained and, and uh, makes you lose that amount of health. So I think it would have died. Um, so that was that was a really cool set. I think that was our first like really cool set that we saw uh, incorporate Terra really well. Um, Austin overall played really well. He played to his win con at the end, which was the Scarf Hydreigon. Um, and uh, but this this Breloom dude, this this Breloom was a demon. Uh, uh, and I, I think, uh, um, I think Griffin probably should have done a better job of keeping Breloom around. Um, and then looking at his team afterwards, uh, we, he, there was no removal. So the, the hazards, uh, ended up being a big deal. What'd you think about this match? And since the teams are here, I'm, I'll just, I can just open them up after the replay is done. But, uh, what, what were your thoughts on this match? Oh my god, let's talk about that Swallow. Oh my <laughs> god, that was such a good set. Um, I think Griffin actually played the early game really well, but he kind of lost a little too much momentum in the middle game. That just gave Austin an in to come in and get that hazard stack off. Yeah. And uh, that really, once he got the hazard stack up, like, Austin's an experienced battler. It's, it's hard to just... Uh, to, to just see him lose once he had that up because it just felt like there was just not enough on Griffin's side. Like, uh, I don't... I particularly didn't... I wasn't super big on the Quackoval being scuffed this week because I thought, realistically, he needed... Like, it just felt like he needed Quackoval to be the one aqua-stepping or trying to uh, force chip on Gastrodon and then trying to get Quackoval off. I do think Austin misplayed here. He had to recover there. He did not. Yeah. Got a little greedy, which I think could have mattered in the end game if Hydreigon wasn't scarf. But since it was scarf, I don't think it was ever going to really matter. Um, with Breloom as well, like, I like the set he brought, don't get me wrong, but I just feel like it lost him a little bit too much momentum in the middle game. I feel like, um, have. I think the biggest problem for Griffin was translating that end game into said that translating that early game into a winning end game. It became too much of uh, giving Austin the, the initiative, and uh, with that, it was a bit of an issue for his team overall, especially once the hazards went up. Yeah, I I, I do think um, 
I 100% agree. I I also think Griffin maybe should could have been a little bit more aggressive with by I, I guess did he not have substitute? He did not have substitute. Okay. Um maybe a more aggressive leap seed. I I also I do think letting Breloom uh like take two dazzling gleams was a mistake. Like I I think um uh, Breloom gave him a decent shot to win, I thought. Um, if he if he kept it alive, but I mean it was hard because Talonflame was still is still around. Once the hazards were up, it was it was going to be just a losing battle for for, for Griffin. Um, but you're right, he did lose a little bit of momentum. The scarf, yeah. I mean, especially since he has that water immunity, like you can't he couldn't lock himself into Wave Crash or Aqua Step, um, mm -hmm. uh, which I he I think he only brought Wave Crash because he was Scarf. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're definitely right about that. Um, and then he, you know, Iron Moth, when it's already taken 50%, it's a little rough. He got a crit here, which, um, I know Austin wanted to T-Wave. I actually think the crit cemented the victory for Austin. Um. Wait, which one did he crit? Sorry? Uh, he crit Klefki. So he wanted to stay in and, uh, he wanted to get the light screen and then T-Wave. But I, I think if... I think if he misses the T wave on the next turn and uh, and Griffin gets the plus one, he wins. Uh, well, unless uh, unless Hydreigon I mean, Okos, which it probably does actually. Yeah, it's still probably Okos. I I think that um, overall Austin should have B waved first. Sure. Because I think uh, even with the light screen up, I don't know if, if like I know the light screen was important, but. The T wave would have just sealed the game, I think. It would right. have been just a little bit cleaner. He could have so been agility too, right? He could have been agility, like. Yeah. So I think T wave was definitely the player there overall, but I think overall both teams played pretty well and had a few misplays. Right. I think Austin definitely made this harder than it should have been for him, considering that middle game. Yes. Um, like not recovering on Gastrodon, like I was just like, okay, you're giving him a chance here. Right. Um, even though that spidef drop on Breloom did end up mattering from that earth power. Um, but uh, on Griffin's side, I feel like uh, yeah, King Gambit didn't really do much. Well, I, got I think he forgot Drain Punch existed on Toxtricity. Uh, yeah, but to be fair, you don't really expect it. <laughs> no, that's true. From Toxtricity. That's true. Well, the thing is, like, when I see, I don't expect it, and then when I see Shift Gear, I'm like, okay, Drain Punch. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, I, he did make it harder on himself, and actually, I take it back, it, he, Griffin would have won if he missed the T-Wave on the next turn, and, and he got the plus one, because he had the he had the booster energy speed oh, boost. Yeah, the speed boost. Yeah. yeah. So, I, the crit actually cemented the win for Austin. Um, yeah. So, it's no. One of those situations. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> um... No, I mean, it, it, like you said, it was it was a good match. It was it was a little, I think, sloppy on both ends because I do think both people both people brought sets that were kind of difficult for the opponent to deal with or were unexpected, like the physical toxicity, the swallot. Um, I think maybe Griffin was a little too invested in getting his toxic spike up, um, and I think that kind of like dictated the way he played swallot. Uh, he, you know, he only needed T-Spike for Gastrodon and the Annihilate, but he had ways to deal with those Pokemon, right? So I, I don't think he needed to keep on to ki uh, clicking T-Spike. I understand why he wanted to, though. But what do you think about that? I agree with that. I just think um, somewhere he needed something on Swallow to hit Toxtricity coming in. And I think that yeah. could be something potentially for a rematch, because now, you know... Austin's gonna prep for, for Terra Normal. <laughs> Swalot. We all have to prep for Swalot now. God damn. Um, I do think it's a it's it was a really good game overall. Like, yeah. It was, it could have gone could have swung either way. I think if King Gambit had a little bit more utility it would really help Griffin here because I think that going down early just really, really made him strike out in the middle game. The other thing I think maybe looking back now is maybe trying to use Quackoval earlier in the game just to force chip on a few things. Yeah. Um, but again, with Gastrodon, it's always difficult. Always difficult. It's a, it's a horrible matchup to Quackoval, um, unless you're like able to get the Aqua Step off on something else and then 
have it bulk up or something like that. But it's it's just not easy to do against the Gastrodon. True. True. Yeah. Yeah. I I am disappointed we didn't get to see the quick the King Gambit do some do some work in this matchup, but um Yeah. Overall I like I think the Swalot set is exactly why this particular format I think is gonna be so much fun and so interesting to watch because like these these tiers four and five are like such wild cards. Um, and it's not just like broken stuff terroring in the, in the top two tiers, you know? So, um, yeah. I, I, like that was just a really, really cool set. And I do hope we see um, more things like that. And I mean, we did see Terra being a decent, um, you know, contributing to um, uh, my win with the Rage Fist and to Griffin's set here. Um, so hopefully we see more of that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a quick look at the standings here. In first place, we have the Milwaukee Mewers with a plus six differential. Uh, for some reason, you're in second place. I don't know why that is, but that's not correct. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> just because of Dragonite. Um, so uh, it, it's actually would be Critic in second place, the Ramsey Ranchers with a plus five, me in third place, um, Austin in fourth, you in fifth. Steven in sixth place by virtue of not playing, and then uh, the bottom the bottom five are correct, are in the correct order there, as you guys can uh, as you guys can see. Um, looking forward to this week, uh, we got week two over here. We have the Manchester Umbreons versus Bayern Munchlax, uh, Ramstein, Ramstein, Raichus versus Atlanta Antarias. Uh, our battle, Evans Gambit versus Green Bay Yampers, Milwaukee Mutual versus Dublin Dragons, and Hartford Bailmers versus Team Rocket. So let's go through these matchups real quick. Um, first up here is Bayern Munich versus Manchester Umbreon. Steven making his season debut. Austin coming off that 2 nothing victory that we had just talked about. And um, I'm going to be honest, I haven't really looked at these matchups uh, yet. So just on initial, on initial look here... Uh, this is a fascinating matchup to me. This is kind of crazy. I, I I don't really know what to think of it. I'm gonna be honest. I'm. I think this might be a rough week for Austin because, uh, sure. like, his team does not match up well into Backscalibur. Even if he's pushing in Klefki, it's like I'm assuming what we're gonna see is something like a Magnet Rise Klefki or something. But uh, I just don't know how he exactly deals with Backscalibur throughout the course of the game because it's like Steven's team is two-paced. It's it's <laughs> not hyper offense and it's not a balanced team. It's in the perfect BO region and it can play that long game against stuff like Gastrodon. Obviously Gastrodon is good in Rotom Wash, but I think the Willowist chip will really start adding up this week, especially with Claude Sayo being just it's so annoying to click a water move into a team with a Rotom Wash and Cloud Sire, and that just helps Volcarona so much. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing would also be, I think Garganaco has to come this week. This is the week for Garganachi. <laughs> um, with Steven, you just never know what you're gonna get with this matchup. I think there's also a chance where you know you can consider something like Kilowatt will coming in and just making an appearance. Because it exploits something like Klefki a lot. Yeah. Or even yeah. Braviary. Like Braviary is probably the scariest Terramon. I is. was thinking and... Terra I was thinking Braviary. That is a super yeah. scary Terramon. Um some something interesting about uh Garganical is Toad Scroll can actually status it, um, with either Toxic or Spore with its ability. So that's something to watch if uh if that occurs. Um no, it'll be interesting. Like it, like you said, I think Klefki is his best answer to Bex Caliber. Steven has the Magneton there too, which Klefki can't really touch at all. So if he gets trapped, if Alison gets trapped, um, his his probably his best answer to Bex Caliber is just gone. So um, yeah, I, I I do think I, I would lead I would lean Steven, like you said, just based on him I'm having Bex Caliber. Sure. Yeah. Um, I can 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 Bexcalibur be burned through Flame Body? Yes, it can be. Okay, so I mean that's another you know <laughs> hail mary of a play. <laughs> yeah, uh, or Austin he has options like to offensively outplay, but he needs to 
like there can't be an, that gap like he had with Griffin early game where he was waiting to see what would happen. He needs to go from turn one. He needs to get that pressure on. Right, right. And I think he tried to do that with setting up right away with Annihilate this this past mm-hmm. week, but um, he got encored. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there, I think there are some defensive Terras he could do potentially to try to stop Excalibur. Um, but you're right. If he can set up early and set the tone, um, there's there's definitely a chance for him uh, to to play around that Excalibur and get a win. Um, not a lot of priority on Austin's team. Um, I'm trying to th- I mean, he has, what, Quick Attack on Scyther? Does Scyther get Quick Attack still? Yeah, I think uh, so. Um, I mean, he has a Brave Bird, potentially, if he wants to run that. Um, and then Klefki, obviously, but, um, other than that, like, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of priority, not a lot of speed. So, I mean, if, if Baxcalibur sets up one T-Dance, it might just be over. <laughs> um, I... I don't know. If I'm Austin here, I think my play is to just go as hyper offensive as you can because there's no way to out to outcheck it. That's just the nature of Faldea as a format. It's sure. just there's no way to outcheck um, most of Steven's threats. On the other hand, Austin also has some really useful defensive terrors that can work. Right. Um, I do think there's options that are available to him. Right. With Steven's game, I think. His hardest part of this game is going to be deciding how he wants to play it and what six he wants. I just, I feel like he's spoiled for choice a bit in this matchup, mm-hmm. and uh, he's just going to have to figure out how not to lose momentum. Right, right. And yeah, I mean the other thing he's he is he does have the hattery to get rid of those, uh, or not to get rid of those, but to prevent those hazards. Um, mm. I, I do think Annihilate has a decent matchup though. I mean I think like if. If, uh, if, you know, it could do some things. Yeah, that, that's a scary mod for Steven to deal with. Obviously, Steven has mods that, that, mods that are faster and can over time deal with Annihilate, but um, I do think it has a pretty good matchup and can do some things. Um, Hydreigon as well is like a good offensive check to Backscalibur, um, considering he just outspeeds it. Uh, but yeah. It, it, it'll be interesting. I, I, I'm excited for this one. I think this is uh, one of the ones I'm excited for the it's most. Definitely a good match. Yeah. It's definitely a good match. What What is your prediction? Um, I'm gonna go to Steven on this one because I just think in the long term it's difficult to predict. I know Austin's creative as fuck and he's gonna he's gonna oops sorry his creative as bleep and he's gonna <laughs> like uh, he's really gonna pull out all the stops. And he's not gonna give Steven an easy time. I, I can honestly see it going either way. Like, um, knowing Austin, I can see it going either way, but I think I'm leaning 2 0 Steven here. I, that, that's exactly what I was gonna say 2 0 Steven. Um, I, I just, I do like his matchup a little bit better. Uh, and I do think there's a thing, like, you could spend so much time trying to figure out how you're gonna deal with Excalibur that you kind of lose sight of his other threats on his team as well. Um, so, uh,. I'm going to go with a 2-0 for Steven as well. All right, what do I have next here? I have our matchup. <laughs> um, so we're both coming off wins. I'm coming off a 4-0 win. You're coming off a 1-0 win. You made one transaction this week. You picked up Lycan Rock Midnight and dropped Haunter. Um, I mean, this is this is kind of weird because we're both on here and we, we we probably don't want to reveal too much about what we're thinking about, but I I think we're both kind of like I don't want to deal with this. I mean, at least that's where I am. Dude, it's kind of like uh, I mean, you know, my big brain strat is gonna be choice band Rotom fan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the, this is the wave. But no, um, on a serious note, I feel like you should really stream during this game because it's gonna take forever. <laughs> <laughs> this game is gonna take quite. <laughs> I feel like, uh, in terms of overall, I actually think it's quite a balanced matchup. I think because, so too. Yeah. Because it feels like, uh, obviously, if it ends faster, it benefits me. If it ends longer, the game goes on, it benefits you. But I just don't think it's that straightforward. Because there's a lot of um, setup. There's a lot of offense and defense and then there's also the hazard game on both sides is not terrible like uh i think there's a lot to deal with on both sides that just there's just certain mods that neither of us can switch into 
which is just Paldea moment. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. I I'm, I'm I'm really excited for this game, but at the same time, I'm just like, fuck! I got a bill for it. I mean, bleep! I got a bill for it. <laughs> it's okay. You can swear. <laughs> we we don't have enough viewers to be monetized. <laughs> oh, thank God. Um, no, I, I, it's really interesting. So I I have I think I have settled on a six, um, but it, it's an interesting one because I also I do, I do think there's like a decent shot we're both in the playoffs. So I kind of also don't want to reveal everything I've been thinking about, like in terms of uh, maybe having a matchup later. Um, so I, that's always hard. That's always hard for me. Like I don't. I always struggle with that. But um, like you said, it's not a straightforward matchup. I I could see. I could literally see any one of these Pokemon coming to this matchup. I think. Um, yeah, yeah. I th I think so. I mean, obviously, the, there are Pokemon that have better matchup. Obviously, but I, sorry. What, what was that? Oh, I said if you beat if you beat me with Ampharos for calling this the Ampharos game. <laughs> <laughs> one one week I will beat someone with Ampharos. Maybe it's this week. Oh, please don't, please don't do that to me. Like I'll 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 give you the win. Just don't bring Ampharos. <laughs> uh, um, it is. This is gonna be a fun game. It it definitely it definitely will be. We won't predict our own matchup. Um, but uh, if you guys want to, make sure you go to the Pickums. Uh, section in the Discord. I'll, I'll right after this. I'll actually I'll, I'll update that. Um, all right. Next up, we have Atlanta and Griffin versus Critic and the Ramstein Raichu. Um, another really fascinating match. This is a really fun week, I think, of, of matchups. Oh yeah. Um, I, I'm just trying to I'm trying to look here and see what my initial thoughts are. Um. Ooh. Interesting. Honestly, this could go either way. Yeah. <laughs> it really could. They both just do not switch into each other. We might just see a game where we have six sacks and like it's just uh the last two months trying to figure out who can set up first. I think I think Mudsdale is a little difficult for a uh, critic to deal with. Um but yeah, I mean, uh, on, on the other end, like, Salamence is, is a Pokemon, like, that's really scary. I'm, I'm sure at some point we'll see, like, Screen Shed Tales of Salamence. I don't know if it's this week, but um, that's something that I would always be afraid of, regardless of the matchup. Um, I think phasing might be pretty important in this one. Uh, yeah, I, I think that too. Um, personally, like... While I like webs on Griffin's side, I feel like it's just I don't too think... slow. Yeah. And if he brings Masquerade, he'd have to bring webs plus setup, if you have to ask me, because he cannot afford to just let those... He cannot just afford to let them get spun away, especially because Sarina exerts a decent amount of offensive pressure here, even though there is a Noivorn. Uh, we did see in the last game that Terra Fairy is an option for it. Um, Scalar Dodge is, again, just such a pain in the ass for Griffin. Um, I feel like uh, it kind of just invalidates a couple of his Pokemon. I think Breloom is going to be huge here, though. Yeah. Breloom being able to spore something is absolutely huge here. Yeah, Breloom, Breloom is huge. A uh, Masquerade is not something I would bring this week. Yeah, me uh, neither, to be honest. Like, I just, I, I don't see what Sticky Webs does. I mean, it, Floatzel, Grafai Eye, and Heracross, I guess. But, like, he has Pokemon that naturally outspeed those Pokemon, you know? So, mm -hmm. I I don't really see the point of that. Um, I do think... Man, I really don't know. <laughs> this is... This is this is interesting. Um, I think uh, it'd be cool. Um, I think I think I'm Burden... I think I'm Burden Graffiti. I could do something this week. Um, I actually, I don't know what coverage it gets, but... Uh, I think There's actually some pretty good coverage overall, but I'm just more concerned about uh, what six Griffin's gonna go with here because personally, it's like it's one of those games where I think Griffin has to decide because Critic is all in on the offense. There's no, he's not hiding it. He's not like if he brings Hip Out on that thing's gonna do damage. He's right. not really bringing like conservative sets. Right. 
So it goes down to Griffin and how he thinks he should best play this. My big thing with this matchup would be honestly, just like yours and my matchup, how much do these guys want to actually show us? How much do these guys, how, how sure are these guys that they're not going to meet in the playoffs? True. True. That, I mean, that's something that's that's always going to have to be balanced. And um, I, I, I do think, like, yeah, I, it is early in the season, too. So I, I, I think, you know, both guys, everyone's still kind of getting a feel for their team and, like, how they want to run everything. Um, mm hmm so uh, it could be a little. It could be. I, I I feel like every kind of result is in the realm of possibility for me here. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at. I, I'm just looking at Griffin's team and I, I also. I don't know what six I would bring. I think if if it were me, I would I would probably bring Mudsdale and Breloom for sure. Um, but I mean, maybe Mudsdale. Maybe Mudsdale is a momentum killer for Griffin. I don't know. Um, but the only thing I'm just really interested in seeing is if Griff Griffin brings uh, Screamtail or not, because it's scary. Like, not bringing Screamtail means there's a world in which Outrage just murders everything. Right. But bringing Screamtail could make you have to alter your six, because can you fit Screamtail and Noivorn in this without going passive in this game? That's the, that's, that's the most important question to ask. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that uh, I I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm sure you know I'm sure we'll both be I, I'm sure you'll be talking to critic about his team and I'll be talking to Griffin about his team this week. So um, it'll be interesting to see what what their thought process is. But um, I don't know who to pick. I I think my in my gut I'm leaning I'm leaning critic here. Uh, in a, uh, I'm gonna say two nothing victory again. I think I I agree with that. I was also leaning critic like duo, but it was I was really tempted to say to say, uh, critic zero zero because I thought you know <laughs> the recoil kill kill his last nine, <laughs> just so that we have the twelve sacks. Oh my gosh! Uh, but I think critic one or two is what I'm leaning personally because I think Griffin has a few more questions in building than critic does. Right. Right. And um, overall, just in terms of offensive pressure, I think it's just tried and tested the critic. He's played hyper offense for a while. He knows the, he knows how to handle this kind of team. So I, I honestly could again. This is again such a good matchup to have. Like so far, three ma three games. I can't give you a clear winner to be honest. Yeah. Same. Well, all right. So we were both we've both predicted two zero victories for both matches. So. Um... All right, up next is the Hartford Whalemers versus the Toledo Team Rockets, both coming off of losses. Um, Matt off of that 1-0 loss. Um, Eric off of that 6-0 loss. Um, I mean, to me, I mean, I you know, again, Matt's just a more experienced battler. I would, I think there's a pretty good shot that Matt just wins this uh, pretty handily. What do you think? Yeah. I think it's uh, it's it's in terms of experience. I don't think I'm I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna doubt Matt at all to close this out. And that's no offense, Eric. That it's just when you've been doing this for a long time, it's not even like playing the same game to an extent. Right. But also in terms of the matchup, like um, dude, Eric the moths, really, like, the moths. Yeah. It's just <laughs> it's so hard to see what what Eric does with this. It's like. Great Tusk versus the world a little bit. And yeah. the other thing is just not having a dragon on Eric's side is just a bit rough. I mean, um, he does have Charizard. Does, I mean, he just ha does have Charizard. It can <laughs> run the solar power and it can be annoying and fun, but I just don't know. I, I just can't see Charizard, especially when the Sandy Shocks. I mean, yes, he can run solar beam, but Sandy Shocks is fat, even without any bulk. Like, it is really fat. And just. It's a difficult matchup for me, for Eric. Um, I with on, on on his, I do think Great Tusk is a problem for Matt. I think Matt has a problem in general against ground types, offensive ground types. He does have a problem because he, let's be honest, he doesn't really have a switch in. Like his switch in is slithering, which is not really the mon you want taking that kind of damage. You want it out there doing that damage and trading 
hits so that it can go 1v1, but that's probably just the trade-off for Matt's team. Like, he might have to bring Jump Bluff again, but, right. uh, or or even Fizdef Sylveon looks pretty sure. good, actually. Because, uh, again, Great Tusk, not Iron Treads, much easier for Sylveon to get the Hyper Voice off. Um, you got a you got a like Shadow Ball coverage for Settle Edge. Um, on Eric's side, I think Great Tusk does it. Pulls in a shift here. There is a world in which Great Tusk can probably put in a lot of work. And I have to say, Matt is probably grateful as hell that he dropped Crocodile. Like, <laughs> Mabo Stiff and Sandy Shocks have just changed the outlook on his team. Yeah, no, those were two great pickups. I mean, so uh, Eric could tear Dragon Charizard, if that's an option. Um, it makes him a little bit hard to deal with with the solar power, but. Um, yeah, other than that, I mean, I think both Moths, Slither Wing, and Frost Moth could be pretty good in this matchup. Um, I think Skill Villain on a Balloon, if he just growths once, can win. Um, especially if Dox One's taking some damage. So, to me, this is a Matt, I'm gonna say 5 0 victory. I'm gonna say Matt 4, because I do think Eric has some options that would force Matt to sack. Because Matt doesn't have the best in terms of momentum. Uh, like his volt turn is really just sandy shocks and uh, slithering so i'm That's gonna true. say both could come which is a very viable option but i do think he'd have to sack a couple months so i'm gonna say four automat and um for eric's team I, I do think there's a world in which he can pull this off like he can he just it, obviously he's gonna need some help and he's gonna need to get a little bit lucky Mm -hmm. in terms of Matt's prep and everything, or Matt making misplays, but um, I think it's... I, I don't see this going any other way than, than Matt winning this. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Alright, and for the final match of the week, we have... the Dublin Dragons versus the Milwaukee Mewers. Um, again, another, another inexperienced battler versus... Uh, an experienced battler. Saho, man! Saho with the scheduling luck! <laughs> um, <laughs> early in the season. Um, but, yeah, I mean, even just matchup-wise, Samir just Samir just kind of has a hard time dealing with a guard shot. <laughs> um, I, it's going to be tough. I mean, there, I, there, actually, there is, I think there is a, a, a world in which Samir could pull it off, honestly, but... Um, it's tough. I mean, like we talked about, there's just so much pressure on Dragapult and Tyranitar to carry the team. Yeah. It, the, the other thing with, with Samir's team is the Tinkerton problem. And uh, the issue with Tinkerton in draft, at least as far as I can see, is that you can only Gigaton hammer once. Sure. And it's just annoying with that 75 attack stat because it's, you cannot Gigaton hammer once and kill Flautus. Like, it's not going to happen unless you're choice banned or at plus two. Right. And there's just not enough avenues for you to get that plus two off because Slowbro just switches in after USD and then you're taking way too much damage from that. Obviously, Tinkerton can run like a knockoff. But I think an SD Tinkerton could do decent work here or like a Balloon Tinkerton. I think Dawn Fan is huge for Samir here. Don Fan mm -hmm. has to not get burned. <laughs> has to <laughs> not get burned and stay alive. Well, so the only thing that can burn it is Rotom Heat. Oh, I guess Spirit too. Too. Yeah, it's. I just think the Rotom Heat could just be an easy thing here overall because, like, yes, it lets in Dragapult, but I, I don't think I'm too worried about that because Dragapult really isn't doing much to Flawless. I mean, let's face it, if Saho just brings his, like, top six mons, like, it's pretty just difficult to deal with. Garchomp says our yeah. slow both floor against Glamour and Rotom Heat. Yeah, the other problem I feel like, which is gonna haunt Samir a bit here, is that his physical quote-unquote wall is Don Fan, and his removal is also Don Fan. And it's just, it's difficult to see how he can manage both those situations. It's just too much overwhelming offensive pressure. Yeah. I think, like, there is a world in which Dragapult could get set up, or even Specs Dragapult could put in work if Flaw just dies, but I'm just not seeing what kills Flaw this year, and that's just the overall, like, I want, like I, the biggest I, thing here. I want, I want to see something here. Let's see how much... 
how much Basculum does uh, to Florgus. Is this light? This is life orb. Okay. Well, okay. So there's that wave crash, and if you were to if you were to tear a water, hmm, that still doesn't do a whole lot, does it? <laughs> I mean, it could be adamant, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it could be choice band too. Yeah, choice band adamant probably could work out. Um, Mastering can actually be a problem. For no, Sato. it could be. It could be. I mean, he has slow bro, so, uh, like obviously. You have crunch. to figure out killing Slowbro beforehand, but, um... So, I, another thing I was thinking was Terra Dark Crunch for Slowbro. I mean, that's... Because it gets the adaptability boost. <laughs> that's true. Oh my god, it gets a plus 2.5, essentially. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. I mean, it's... It's a... It's, it's a, something that could be cool to bring. Yeah. But I don't think I see Sahel losing this necessarily. I think uh I think he's gonna take this one four oh. I think I think four oh is a pretty good bet. I, I, I do think just real quick, I think a spot throw could be a bit of an issue if it if it gets set up. Um with store power and like shadow ball or something. Um but I, I think Sahel should have enough to, to 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 deal with it. Um Yeah. But that must scary, you know. It's it's ninth on the list here, so it just kind of hides there. But it's a it's a scary Pokemon, to, to, in my opinion. Yeah, it's definitely a threat. It's definitely something that uh, Sahil has to watch out for because a calm mindset, you know, Scizor is not around. Scizor's down. You have a calm mindset that's fully physically defensive, bold, right. and you have like calm mind protect or combine boost with dazzling gleam and store power it could be annoying yeah um could definitely pose some problems i'm just i don't know i'm not seeing sahil giving him enough turns to set it up though that's yeah yeah i agree with that uh i'm gonna go 3-0 sahil in this one um so just so you know we we differ a little bit more <laughs> in our face um <laughs> Run away from your brother and giving it to your <laughs> yeah, Exactly. Exactly. I need Sahel to lose Mons after week one, okay? We gotta we gotta we gotta catch up uh <laughs> to the to the plus six. Um But that's all of the matchups for this week. Part of is on his buy. Like I said, to me the game of the week is probably uh Hmm. I mean, I think any of these top three ones could be game of the week. You also get someone like Eric really surprising us. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I think we need to be a bit more open-minded to upsets here because I think that's the beauty of the Paldea Dex format. That's There's true. just too many holes in places. Like, uh, most that's teams true. don't have a cover-all, a check-all, or like just every team has a weakness that can be exploited. That's true. That's true. Um, it'll definitely be an interesting week for sure. The week, the battles start, uh, or they theoretically start on Wednesday, the 28th. Um, uh, I don't think we have any battles scheduled currently. Um, but, uh, if you do want to join the Discord, make sure you guys check out the link to the Discord, uh, below in, in, uh, the notes. Um, if you did enjoy, please make sure you like and subscribe. I'm glad we're staying under an hour this time. Last time it was an hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> uh, but no no draft recap, so it was a little easier to, to do that. Uh, but thank you again, TRT, for coming on. It was fun. Uh, hopefully we can have you back again soon. Thanks for having me on, dude. Yeah. All right, see you guys later. <laughs>